So here's the thing. I'm not good at sewing. I might look confident in my videos, but what you don't see is that every time I sit down on my sewing machine, I am absolutely freaking out. Sewing patterns, cutting fabric, fitting, all of this just stresses me out. This is in part because I'm a self-taught sewist, so I'm pretty much just making things up as I go. The other part is that I feel really precious about my handwoven fabrics. I mean, I worked so hard on the fabric, the last thing I wanna do is just totally destroy it in the sewing process. So in this video, I wanna weave a ton of fabric that I can mess with. Yardage that I don't feel precious about, that I can use to learn to sew some simple patterns from my pattern books, and also use to try to recreate some designs that I've seen on Pinterest. So I decided to turn this into a challenge. I'm gonna weave one yard of fabric every day for 30 days. And ideally by the end of the month, I'll have 30 yards of handwoven fabric that I can use to practice sewing. So this video is gonna document that 30 day journey. So first things first, I need to figure out my warp situation. I really have no interest in threading my loom a million times over the course of one month. So I got myself something to make things a little bit easier. This is a gigantic Sayori ready-made black cotton warp. This warp is 250 threads wide and 30 meters long, so I have exactly enough to complete this whole month's worth of weaving without needing to thread my loom again. And because it's a plain black warp, it's basically a blank canvas, so I don't really have to think about coordinating my colors or planning this project super far in advance. I can just kind of do whatever I want. Okay, enough talking. I'm gonna go put this warp on my loom, and then tomorrow I'm gonna start day one of this weaving challenge. Good morning! I've got my coffee and I'm ready to start day one. So I'm going to start this project by winding up a whole bunch of bobbins using yarns from this giant scrap stash. Some of these yarns are scraps from my own personal projects, but a lot of them are actually from when I took a weaving class at a local community college. In class, when people had like bobbin leftovers and yarn scraps, they would often just like take it and throw it into the yarn shelf. So there was like a lot of yarn scraps accumulating constantly in the classroom. And the teacher was gonna throw it all away. So I just like took a trash bag and scooped it all up. So I've just been untangling those yarns and sorting them into little bundles, knowing that they'd be perfect for a project like this. So I'm just gonna look through this giant pile of yarn and pick out some things that inspire me in the moment. And then we're gonna get started on day one. five days of weaving so far, and before I get started on day six, I wanted to do a little five-day check-in. So far, I think this project is going really well. At first, I was pretty nervous about how I was gonna incorporate this weaving into my daily routine, but I've actually been making it work pretty nicely. I just wake up in the morning, make myself coffee, do my morning journaling, and then head straight to the loom. And that's actually been like a really nice thing to do for myself every day, because it definitely sets like a really productive, creative tone for the rest of the day. 
and it puts me in a good mood. The other thing that I'm really happy about is that I've made a pretty significant dent in my scrap stash. The only challenging thing about using the scraps has been that I haven't really had a lot of control over my color palette, which is normally something that I really like to have control over. So this has definitely been an exercise in just kind of like letting go and embracing kind of whatever happens. That's also why I haven't really been using any kind of like fancy weaving techniques or anything like that. Because the scrap yarns are so crazy and I'm using such like wild and random colors, I didn't want to also throw weaving techniques and textures into that mix and make a fabric that's even crazier. I've also really just been enjoying sitting down at the loom and just throwing the shuttle back and forth and not really thinking about complicated designs. I'm just gonna keep going, keep having fun with it, keep using my scraps, I've also been kind of reaching into my own yarn wall to kind of pick out whatever colors I might be missing from my scrap stash. And now it's time for day six. I've now finished 10 days of weaving, so it's time for another check-in. I'd say this project is still going really well, and I'm definitely still having a whole lot of fun with it. So for days eight, nine, and 10, I started using totally different yarns that were from my yarn stash. This is because I was running out of the scrap yarns that I needed to keep this color palette going, so I decided to just totally change things up. These yarns were actually really kindly gifted to me from some friends who were de-stashing their own yarn collections, so I'm still keeping with that whole secondhand yarn theme. But before I can start my next day of weaving, I have to figure out my fabric situation. So pretty much I'm at the point where I physically can't fit any more fabric onto my loom. So while I'm weaving, when you see me crank the fabric forward, what I'm doing is wrapping it around this bar that sits at my lap. This bar is now so full that it literally won't move anymore. So if I wanna keep weaving, I have to cut this fabric off of the loom, which is actually gonna be really exciting because I have no idea what this fabric looks like. I've been making an effort to not look at the fabric at all after I weave it. So basically I weave, I wind it, and then I don't open it up again. And I've been doing this because I wanted to escape the pressure of feeling like I have to match everything I'm doing. Because I know that if I was looking at the day before, I'd want to try to do something that coordinates with it. And I just didn't want to deal with that self-imposed pressure. So when I unwrap this fabric to take it off the loom, that's actually going to be my first time ever seeing it. And that's really exciting for me. So I'm going to go ahead and take care of all of that. And then I can start my 11th day of weaving. Oh my gosh, I can't even unwrap it. It's stuck. <laughs> I was definitely really worried the first couple days, just like kind of going for it with the scraps that I would end up with a total mess. But I actually really like how this turned out. Like the colors actually work somehow, which is really exciting to me. It's just a huge pile of happy.
It's day 15, so it's time for another check-in. We're halfway there, can you believe that? You may have noticed that my weaving has gotten a bit wild. So basically these were all the colors that were left over in the bin after I picked out everything that I had already wanted for the first 10 yards of this weaving. This ended up being mostly blues, greens, and oranges, and at first I thought they would work really well together, so I started taking the project pretty seriously and doing meticulous designs. I then realized that the colors were way too loud and crazy for my taste, which is saying something, and I started to hate the fabric that I was working on. So I decided to just kind of embrace this feeling of not liking my fabric and just push through and keep going to see what would happen. I started throwing in wool roving, art yarn scraps, thick yarns, thin yarns, glitter, shine, texture, everything. Just whatever brought me the most joy in the moment. I've never really felt this loose and free with my weaving before, and I think it's because I let go of the goal of trying to make it look perfect. So at the end of this, I'll probably end up with a fabric that isn't the most wearable. The colors definitely give me tacky early 2000s Nickelodeon vibes, but that's okay because I'm having a lot of fun with it and I made another huge dent in my scrap stash. I've actually totally run out of these yarn scraps, so I have to rethink my color palette. I don't really have a plan at all, but I was thinking about just poking around my yarn shelf and seeing what I could find. And then it's on to day 16. of this project I explored two different ideas. When I was looking through my yarn stash I realized that I had a whole bunch of teal colored yarns in a wide variety of textures so I thought it'd be fun to just play around with those yarns for a little bit and go for kind of like a monochromatic look. At first I really liked how the fabric was turning out but after a little while I got really bored of weaving with just the one color and I really needed some variety. So for the last couple meters I decided to go in a completely opposite direction. I had a bunch of bobbins left over from the previous yarns of this project so I decided to only use those so I wouldn't let those yarns go to waste. At first I thought this would make a total mess, but then I actually really liked how the colors went together. I'm now realizing that learning to trust myself has become a major theme in this project, but I'll get to all of that reflecting and discussing at the end of the video. For the next part of my project, I wanted to use this big bag of Noro scraps that I have in my stash. Noro is one of my absolute favorite yarn brands, and I managed to accumulate quite a scrap stash using both yarns from my past projects and also from my friends who like to knit with these yarns. I figured I'd just start weaving with these and see where they take me. But before I can start weaving, I'm at the point where I have 10 meters of fabric on my loom again, so I have to cut it off first. And then I can start day 21. just finished day 25 and I can see the finish line ahead. The last couple of days of weaving have been really fun because I absolutely love weaving with gradients and letting the funky Noro yarns kind of work their magic. 
I started out by using that bag of Noro scraps that you saw earlier in the video, but I pretty quickly ran out of those. And because I didn't have enough fabric yet to sew something substantial, I ended up going to the yarn store. I wasn't sure how many balls of yarn to get, but I must have guessed correctly because I ran out of yarn at exactly the five meter mark. So that worked out perfectly. I might cut this fabric off the loom because the fabric is so thick that my loom is pretty much already filled up and I don't want to start on my next color palette and have to stop halfway. Speaking of my next color palette, for the last five meters of this project, I want to weave with some yarns that I recently dyed. I've been really into ice dyeing lately and I've been dyeing all kinds of stuff, like this shirt that I'm wearing right now, and also these three cotton yarns, which are still wet, but that's okay, I'll make sure they're dry before I use them. I don't know how much fabric I'm going to get out of just three skeins of yarn, but I'm hoping that it's at least a couple days worth of weaving, and I might decide to incorporate some other colors from my yarn stash just to kind of maximize the yardage and hopefully hit the end of this warp. This is the last stretch and I'm determined to finish strong, so I'll see you next at day 30. I just finished day 30 and I can't believe it. It seems like there might have been more than 30 meters on this pre-wound warp, so even though I did weave 30, there's still a little bit left. I guess probably like a meter or so. So I'll probably finish those up off camera and then I can show you what those look like right here. So before I sit down and I share all my final thoughts about this project, I wanted to take a little bit of time off just to kind of collect my thoughts, take a little bit of a break, and also take care of all of that fabric that I just wove. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut this fabric off the loom. Secondly, I'm going to take all the fabric, lay it out on the ground, and take photos of every day's worth of weaving. These are pretty much going to be all the photos that you just saw alongside all the time lapses. I'm then going to remove all of the safety pins. and then cut the fabric into shorter lengths based on the color palette, so they'll be a lot easier for me to wash, store, and manage. I'll then take all of the fabrics to the sewing machine and sew along all the cut edges to keep the fabrics from unweaving themselves. So the next step is to wet finish the fabrics. Normally I'd hand wash everything, but I don't really think I have it in me to hand wash this much fabric at once. I think that I'm just gonna take all the fabrics and toss them in the washing machine on a cold, delicate cycle and use a wool wash for delicate fabrics. I think the only fabric I might wash by hand is my five meters that I wove with the Noro yarns because all those yarns were single ply wools and I really don't want those to get super felted and funky in the wash. I'm then gonna hang up all the fabrics and let them air dry for a few days. We're done! Now that the 
this project's done, I wanted to sit down and share some of my feelings and the things that I learned throughout this experience. And I have my notes here with me just to make sure that I don't miss anything. I'm absolutely shocked by how much fabric I made. It really doesn't look like much when it's all bundled up and sitting on the table like this, but I'll put some pictures on the screen of all the fabrics laid out so you can really get a look at how much this actually ended up being. Because I was weaving it meter by meter and I wasn't looking back at anything I made, I never fully realized how much fabric I was actually making. And then it really hit me when I had to iron all of this, which took over two hours. But that's something really interesting to think about because the thought of sitting down and weaving 30 meters feels absolutely overwhelming. But by breaking it down into small, manageable daily chunks, the project totally flew by. And sitting down at the loom every single day definitely made me think about my weaving process differently, which I think in the long term will help me change my relationship with weaving for the better. In general, turning weaving into a daily routine made me feel so much less precious about my time at the loom. Before, I'd make all these preparations for a project, but I'd give myself no wiggle room. I'd carve out a very short period of time with a very select set of yarns, and then a warp that was exactly the right length for the project that I had in mind. And then I'd feel super precious about the fabric because I'd feel like it was my one shot to make something, so like I had to get it right. But when I used this challenge to turn weaving into a daily routine, I got rid of that pressure to make it right. I didn't feel like I just had one chance to make something because I knew that there would be a next day and a next day and a next day and there would just be more weaving to do. And because my time at the loom became less precious, the weaving itself also became less precious. If you can tell by now, I'm very much an obsessive perfectionist. I think this is partly by nature and also because I'm still new to weaving, so I'm still building up my confidence. I'm not sure how well this actually translated during my five day check-ins, but pretty much every time I wanted to start a new section of weaving and I didn't have a plan and I wasn't really sure about what I was doing, I always assumed the absolute worst about how the fabric was gonna turn out. But once I actually got into it, I always ended up having so much fun. Like when I was feeling really self-conscious and I thought that I was making the ugliest fabric in the entire world, and then I decided to just totally let go and have fun, it ended up producing one of my absolute favorite fabrics of the whole project. And even if I don't end up wearing the particular fabric, I still had so much fun making it. And that's what this whole hobby is supposed to be about, right? With that being said, I do think that some of my freedom to kind of make messes and explore was definitely enhanced by my secondhand yarn situation. I'm so lucky to have a really great network of friends who've afforded me the opportunity to stockpile their yarn odds and ends, because truthfully, it's a lot easier to let go and embrace the feeling of making a chaotic mess when I didn't have the stress looming over my head that I was wasting materials. I don't have a massive weaving stash at my disposal with like every single color I could ever want. So usually when I start a project, I have to be really strategic and particular and plan ahead because I have to go out and buy my supplies. This time, because I just kind of used the yarns that I've been passively collecting over time, like the scraps and the odds and ends, I felt like I had a lot more freedom to make a mess because it didn't feel like there were any real consequences. You can totally see this in how my weaving changed from when I was using the scrap yarns to when I was using some yarns that I would consider more precious. These were dusty old yarns that I scooped off the floor in school, and these were my own hand-dyed yarns that I felt super precious about. And there's nothing wrong with either one of these, it's just two totally different mindsets that I'm trying to learn how to tap into. And don't get me wrong, I love both fabrics, but I definitely had way more fun weaving the first one than I did the second one. And this is because with my special yarns, I felt the need to make my fabric perfect so the yarns wouldn't go to waste. This whole experience has been a really great reality check because what could really go that wrong? You know what I mean? Like, what does waste even mean? It totally reminds me of that one quote that's like, paint is only wasted if it stays in the tube. I think that also totally applies to yarn, because I feel like a yarn stash is only worth having if you have the confidence to use it. And if you use it, then that's just a reason to go buy more yarn. <laughs> Speaking of which, I told myself that if I finished this challenge, I'd buy myself a really special ball of yarn. And I went out and got it this weekend, and I'm so excited. <laughs> Here it is. I've been dreaming of this exact yarn for so long now, but I felt like I had to justify the cost by planning the perfect project for it. But now I know that any project I make with this yarn will be perfect. In the end, I'm really glad I took on this challenge because turning weaving into a daily routine helped me build my confidence. I learned to not give as much attention to the overly critical nitpicking voice in my head and to be more comfortable just letting go and embracing not really having a plan. It also helped me realize that my weaving process would really benefit from longer warps and slower weaving, which would take away some of the pressure to do things perfectly and help me feel more empowered to take more risks. If you're watching this and you also do some kind of creative activity, whether weaving or anything else, I definitely recommend taking on some kind of daily challenge. It doesn't have to be as intense as this, 
But finding some way to make your hobby into a daily routine, even for as little as 15 minutes a day, will definitely help you build your confidence and strengthen your relationship with your craft. So that's it. If you've gotten this far in the video, I just want to say thank you. Thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for supporting me as an artist. You'll definitely see these fabrics reappear again, whether in the next video or on my Instagram feed, as soon as I find the inspiration to sew them into something. So if that sounds interesting to you, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next video.